Okay, so at the end of the public goods section, um, one of the final points about why public goods are a tricky issue, um, we said that public goods are a positive externality. So an externality has a specific definition in economics. The core uh, ESPP textbook that you read, for whatever reason, they decided not to call it an externality. They called it an external effect. Um, it's the same thing as an externality. They chose external effect because it's less jargony. Um, but externality is a fairly common term that you'll see um, in the economics and the policy world. So it's, it's good to be familiar with that. But they're the same thing. So an external effect or an externality is a cost or a benefit to somebody who did not choose that cost or benefit. It's essentially the consequences of some action. So if you light fireworks, for instance, other people will benefit from those fireworks. And that benefit is like free to them. And so that is a positive externality if they like fireworks. There are also negative externalities. Um, if somebody has a dog or young children, um, there are negative consequences that come from having your neighbors light fireworks. And those are negative external effects or negative externalities. It could be that one of the pieces of the firework lands on your neighbor's roof and lights their house on fire. That would be a very big negative externality. It's something that they did not choose, um, but they have to bear that cost. And so it's basically, if you think of externalities as kind of like the side effects of actions or the consequences of actions or the downstream effects of actions, that, that's what we have with externalities here. Um, the official um, economics language for this is it's a social marginal cost or marginal benefit. Um, and if you remember when we talked about supply and demand a few sessions ago, marginal cost is the supply curve and marginal benefit is the demand curve. It's the, the benefit you get from using a, project or a product or a good or a service. And the supply is the marginal cost. It's how much uh, it costs to make one additional thing. Um, but this is different because we're talking about the social marginal cost. So it's the benefit that society gets from an action or um, the benefit that this is, or the, the negative consequences that society gets. So we can actually do this graphically. And this is where our math comes back into play. So if we have this here, this is just some quantity of something at some price. The marginal cost and the marginal benefit according to what's happening in the market right now says there should be 22-ish things provided at like $8, sure, wherever those cross. Um, but let's say in the production of this, as you're creating these things, let's say it's books. These are very bad books um, full of pollution in them. So every book that you create causes $5 of damage to society. Um, we'll pretend that that's the case. What that means is the marginal cost for society, the social marginal cost, is actually going to be higher. It's more expensive in society um, to create these things that cause negative externalities. Um, if there's pollution that comes with the, the production of a new book. Book's probably not the best example. Let's talk about gasoline. If you're uh, drilling for oil and um, refining it into gasoline and then transporting it to gas stations, um, every time you pull out an additional barrel of oil, there's a social cost to, like there's damage that happens to society. And then society has to bear that cost. And so what actually ends up happening is the market's providing at this level right here, where marginal benefit and marginal cost cross, but the social marginal cost is actually higher, which means if we want to hit the socially optimal level of things, um, we should actually have fewer books or fewer barrels of oil or fewer whatever uh, where it's crossing right here. So instead of 24, we should really be having 18, 17-ish, wherever that lines up. And it should be more expensive um, because then fewer people will buy it um, and there will be less quantity. And so this is an example of a, po of a negative ex production externality the negative consequences that come from producing something. So as you're producing stuff, it's causing damage to society. The specific term for that is marginal damage, or it's the damage that happens as a result of producing one additional thing. Um, and because of that, the ideal level of consumption for society is actually lower, um, and it should be more expensive. 
but we're not actually hitting that because nobody's paying that marginal damage and so we're producing too much stuff for too cheap. Um, this is why I had you watch the little musical number from the Lorax. Um, the whole point of that was um, you can see the negative externalities that came from the production of thneeds. Um, as they're producing more and more thneeds, it's causing all sorts of damage to society. There's some sort of marginal damage that happens um, as they're producing more and more of this stuff, and it makes society worse off. But um, they keep producing because they're not hitting the level where the social marginal cost and demand are meeting. They're meeting just where regular marginal cost and demand are meeting. And so there's too much stuff, there are too many needs, and they're too cheap. Um, and so there's too much out in the world and it's causing all sorts of bad um, negative outcomes. Um, there's a whole host of other examples of externalities out in the world. Pollution is one of the most common ones. You can get into environmental economics and your whole world in environmental economics is externalities. Um, pollution is kind of a prime example of this because if you have a factory and you're polluting and dumping stuff into a river, you don't care where that goes. It's just going to, the sludge is going to go downstream. It might affect fishermen downstream sucks for them, but it's free for you to just dump it there. Um, and so you're causing marginal damage as you're putting that stuff into the river and it's making society worse off. There should be less of the stuff you're making, um, but you're not bearing that cost. And so you can shove it down the river and that's fine. Vaccinations are an example of a positive externality. If more people get vaccinated against diseases like polio or like measles or the flu, it actually builds herd immunity and makes it so that everybody else is safer. And so your individual actions make it so um, it's better for society. Um, and it, it changes the dynamics in the opposite way. We've been looking at negative externalities, but there's a, there are positive externalities as well. Society is better off if more people get vaccinated. Um, and so we like this, we want to encourage this. Cell phones and driving. This is a good example of a negative externality where your choices, if you choose to text while you're driving, um, you become more distracted and more dangerous to people and you risk causing accidents and hurting other people. Um, the people who get hurt by that action didn't choose to get in a crash with you, um, but because you chose to text um, while driving, um, you're imposing those costs on other people and it becomes a negative externality. You're essentially polluting, um, but polluting with distractions on the freeway or something. The, the analogy falls apart there, um, but it, it still works as a negative externality. Internet bandwidth um, does have externality issues here, um, where if enough people use the internet here, um, you've probably noticed if you've ever been on campus during the day at like noon, the internet goes really, really slow. Um, because everybody's watching videos. It also happens in the evening um, at, at home. Everybody's watching Netflix at the same time, and that reduces bandwidth. Um, and so that actually turns into a negative uh, consumption externality, where you choose to watch a show on Netflix. Um, it causes negative consequences to other people. It slows down their internet. It slows down your internet as well, but you're not really bearing that cost. You're not... Um, you're not getting charged for hurting other people's bandwidth um, other than it hurts your own bandwidth. And so you create a negative externality here. Research, like medical research or basic scientific research, is often seen as a positive externality. Um, if there are researchers developing new treatments for COVID-19 or for cancer or for other major diseases, all of society benefits from that. Um, and so we want to encourage basic research and medical research because we all get the benefits of it. Um, if there's a new vaccine developed for COVID-19, for instance, um, we would all eventually get that vaccine and benefit from it and no longer be in pandemic mode. And so we want to encourage these pos the positive externalities that come from research. Education, like public education, is also seen as a positive externality. Having a more educated um, electorate leads arguably to better leaders who are elected and then better policies. Um, 
and so we, we like education. So we encourage education, we subsidize it um, through public schooling so that we can benefit from the positive externalities that come from a more educated population. So we like that. Um, so we can graph all of these things using supply and demand curves um, to show what externalities look like. So if you have positive production externalities, this means like producers, um, factories, um, or people that make stuff, they can cause positive externalities. And so that's what this looks like here. There's some marginal cost, some marginal benefit. And so this is what society is producing right now is where these two are crossing right at this point here. But because they are producing good things and, and hurt or not hurting, helping society, it actually makes society better off. And so there should be more of it. Ideally, there should be more stuff produced at a cheaper price. So this is like down at $4 instead of $8 here. So the price should be cheaper and there should be more of it because of the positive externalities. In this situation, the social marginal cost is under the marginal cost line. Um, and so that's one way you can recognize if it's a positive uh, effect or a negative effect. Um, if it's positive, the social marginal cost is below. Um, you can memorize that or you can think about it when you look at this and you say, this is what is currently being provided. It should be down here. So whatever the good is, there should be more of it and it should be cheaper. Um, so this is like basic research, medical research. Um, it's going to be more expensive and underprovided right now. Um, in theory, there should be a lot more of it and it should be a lot cheaper. But nobody's kind of bearing those costs of the research and so um, it's not as provided as it should be. And so there's not enough of this good positive externality. Um, this is where public goods fit in. There's not going to be enough because it's going to be underprovided and too expensive. We want to be in this world in positive externality land, but we can't get there because of the incentives. Um, we also have negative production externalities, where in this situation, this is what is being produced right now. In theory, society should be hitting this level, which is a lot less and a lot more expensive. Um, but because nobody's paying for it, we're stuck back at this world where it's cheap and too much of it. Um, in this uh, classic, classic example of this is pollution again, um, where if a factory can just make however much stuff it wants and spit out however much pollution it wants, it's going to do a lot of it. And society will um, want less of it, but it can't get to it because nobody's bearing that cost. Um, and so we're stuck at that world here. You can also have externalities from the consumption side or the demand side. Um, so here, instead of moving the marginal cost up and down, we're actually moving the marginal benefit, which is the demand curve here. So in this world, um, if it's positive, social marginal benefit is up above. Um, this is an example of vaccines, where we're currently at this world here. We want to be at this world here, um, where society is going to be better off because there's going to be more of it. It's going to be slightly more expensive to get up to that point. And so we might need government subsidies or something to make it so that there's more use of vaccines, so that there's more societal benefit. Um, you can also have negative consumption externalities, where by people consuming something, people purchasing something, it makes society worse off because it's causing damage as they're doing it. Um, in this situation, a good example is international airline travel. Um, when you go on a long plane ride, you're actually causing damage to the environment and helping emit more carbon. Um, it's not a lot, but as that keeps building up over time, it does make society worse off. And so if you want to reduce that, this is the level we're at right now. We want to reduce that down here to a lower quantity and make it so there are fewer, um, fewer miles traveled on an airplane um, because there will be less damage to society. So that's, those are the four different types of externalities. You have positive and negative consumption externalities and positive and negative production externalities. Um, and so in problem sets and in exams, I'll give you different situations and you'll need to identify who is causing the externality and who is bearing these costs and if it's positive or negative. And so you'll, you'll get practice doing this. Um, one final important thing um, to note with all of these externality issues is that they are full of equity and fairness issues. The people who bear the costs of negative externalities 
um, are generally the most marginalized in society um, because the powerful have access to institutions and they have access to the rules and the laws and um, resources. And so there's this whole world of environmental justice research that looks at where the most pollution happens and who is bearing the costs of pollution. And so this research article right here shows um, that the sites for um, CDC Superfund locations that are like highly polluted, that are designated as super dangerous, um, you're not allowed to build in Superfund sites and they get extra federal funding to clean them up. Um, most Superfund sites are in areas that are majority black or Latino. Um, and what, they, what the researchers here argued, um, one of the main arguments is that it's, it's a chicken and egg problem, that maybe black people are moving to um, environmentally damaged areas because they are. And then the opposite argument is that black communities were there already, and then white um, polluters and companies purposely showed up and dumped stuff there. Um, and so what, what the researchers find in this article is that it is, it is that story. Um, that um, polluters and firms that create all sorts of um, social or environmental damage purposely choose poor neighborhoods to dump their stuff. Um, and then it causes all sorts of long-term environmental damage, which is an issue. Um, this is another research article that shows the same thing, um, but here using air pollution, um, this PM 2.5 measure here. And what they find is that non-Hispanic whites have something called a pollution advantage, where they experience 17% less air pollution than um, other races and other ethnic groups in society. Um, and it's because factories that, po that pollute and that create all sorts of bad air quality are located in areas that are not white. Um, and so they find here that blacks and Hispanics bear the pollution burden in this country and get all sorts of excess exposure, which then leads to lung disease and cardiovascular disease and all sorts of other bad issues. Um, and so the, the consequences of these externalities are important to pay attention to. And the burden of the externalities is a very important thing to pay attention to um, when you're setting policy and when you're analyzing policy. So it's something to be aware of for sure as you think about this stuff. We've been um, giving examples of like a factory polluting downstream and so then fishermen down there have to deal with the pollutants. In the United States, in this hypothetical situation, in general, the factory is going to be white and rich and the downstream people are going to be communities of color. Um, and that's how it is, unfortunately. Um, and government policy has been used to actually create that. The EPA designates um, areas as these, these highly polluted areas um, because of this historical legacy of, of racism and it's bad for policy. Um, so pay attention to that when you're considering externalities and um, the consequences of externalities and the burdens of them.